I'm Hans, and today we are going to talk about single sign-on. Can you uh, introduce single sign-on for us? Single sign-on? Sure. Yeah. So maybe I can explain it with uh, an example. Um, we have a customer, they're called uh, IBR. They have uh, a public website with all kind of general information. They have an extranet with uh, documents and uh, uh, systems where they can register and do, do other stuff. Um, they have a CRM system with all kind of contact details. They also have a, a system where they share financial data, company web, um, and they have some other, other applications that they, they offer to their members. Um, one of the problems is that for the end user, um, there are different kind of passwords they have to use for each application. Um, so if I'm the end user, yeah. and I want to go here, I have to enter this password. If I want to go here, I have to enter another password. And that's obviously not very handy for these people. So one of what we want to do with single sign-on is to make sure that all these applications are available to this user with one password, one credential. And um, this makes it also much easier for uh, our customer to, to uh, manage the credentials. Because if you manage it centrally, the person goes here, enters a username, a password. Maybe you have to put your Belgium EID or another a credential in there, and then you automatically have access to all these applications uh, without having to enter other passwords. And you can even switch from one application to the other uh, fully transparently. So you just yeah. click, you're there, you don't have to enter uh, passwords again. I heard uh, single sign-on is a hot topic. Why is that exactly? Yeah, that, that's, that's true, because um, actually what happens today is that a lot of companies are uh, moving to the cloud. So what are they doing there? moving some of their applications that were previously internal uh, to the company, they're moving it outside and they're moving it to data centers, they're moving it to Microsoft, to Google. Previously, a lot of companies use Active Directory internally and there you have the user and, and all the applications are talking to Active Directory. Uh, but when you're hosting to an external data center like with Microsoft, you're, it's difficult to talk to this Active Directory uh, through the internet. So you need to expose that to the internet uh, in a way. Um, so what you need to do is actually to, to make sure that these applications uh, are single sign-on enabled. Mm -hmm. So once you move them outside, that they still can use the single user database. Maybe it's good that you talk to um, our developers, yeah. uh, Mel and, and Voiku. Yeah. They can tell you much more about how this works uh, on the technical level. Please enter. Thanks. So everything that we show here, the single sign-on with an identity provider is based on uh, open standards. It's uh, WS Federation and WS Trust, the passive uh, requester profile. So it's, it's a standard. Yeah. And uh, Microsoft just implemented the standard in uh, Windows Identity Foundation. And Windows Identity Foundation is the framework on which all this is based. Yeah. Maybe let's start with the demo. Yeah. Um, so I want to use my EID card, which I recently got, to authenticate uh, to an ASP.NET web application. Yeah. So in this example here, I'm going to prepare my ID card. Uh, all right. And this is just a normal EID card reader. I'm going to put my card inside. And if we look on the screen now, we have two applications. One is human resources and one is travel management, let's say, for example, for a uh, company. And I'm going to configure them to enable single sign-on. That's the URL of the application. We click Next. We don't use HTTPS. We use an existing identity provider. That's the URL of the, of the identity provider, econtract.be, EID, IDP endpoints. We... <laughs> Don't use certificate validation. We don't use encryption. This is the list of claims that the identity provider can give us. Finish. And that's all I had to do to use the tooling of Visual Studio. Quickly do the same for the, same, for the second application. That's all I have to do uh, so that my application uses an external identity provider. If we go to the URL now, we will be redirected to the identity provider page. 
EID identity provider. Now I'm asked to put my ID card in the reader. I click yes. I put my PIN code. I click OK. I'm authenticated if the PIN code is correct. And I'll be redirected back to the application. And hopefully I'll be able to see the list of uh, attributes that are on my identity card, like uh, birth date, first name, last name, address. So now if we go to the second application, to the travel management, we can see that I don't have to authenticate again. I'm already in the application. I see the same list of claims. So see the single sign-on process worked. So Normally, yeah. the same thing is possible for SharePoint sites. Yeah, so once we have set it up, we can create sites with claims-based authentication. And then here, we can um, select Enable. a trusted identity provider. We select sign-in method custom STS which will go to the external identity provider. Here we are asked for username password. We just click log on and we are in the site. Uh, another possibility is to use uh, ADFS. ADFS is uh, an identity provider from Microsoft. Um, ADFS is integrated in uh, Windows 2008 Enterprise, I think. Yeah. And there's a third possibility. You can create your own custom identity provider, just like the guys from FedEx did. They created this one with EID. But you can create your own. OK, perfect. This is very clear. Thank you, thank you, and Matt. You're welcome. Anytime. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, see you next time. Huh? Yeah. All right. Thank you. See you. Bye. <laughs>